right, so as you feel ready, just go ahead and start to head back to your back, get to that comfortable spot, finding a place on the floor or in a child's pose, however you feel most at ease, most comforted, take your time to do that and find that comfortable place. And then as your body feels ready, start to tap into your breath. We're gonna start by resting our attention on the feeling of the breath in the body for a few moments. In your mind's eye, recall an experience where you felt totally present and comfortable, confident and empowered. Do your best to recall the details using all of your senses. What you smelled, what you tasted, saw, heard, touched, and felt. When you have a clear me memory of the experience and how good you felt, think of a current event where you wish you could feel just a little bit more confident. Allow the confident feeling from your past experience to permeate your visualization of the current experience. For a few moments, do your best to keep that self-confident empowered feeling in the current experience visualization. Adding a little length to the inhale and a little length to your exhale. Take a few more breaths just to notice how you feel in your own body. Allow that feeling of confidence to move from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Taking your time, we're going to slowly start adding a little bit of movement to our bodies. Maybe letting our heads sway a little bit back and forth on the floor. Maybe opening and closing the hands, pointing and flexing the toes. As you feel ready, start to bring some movement into your lower body. So if your legs have been long, let's go ahead and bend the knees. If your knees have been bent, we're going to start to windshield wiper those knees a little bit right and left. Just some simple movements. We're going to use a lot of our side body today so that the next time that your knees have fallen all the way to your right hand side. You're going to lift your left arm up and over your head and let your left arm stretch towards that wall behind you. Perfect. Next time your knees go the opposite direction, so when your knees are to the left, you're going to stretch your right arm up and over your head. Feeling nice and long through this side wall. Beautiful. Start to stand those knees up. Let's do it again the other way. So when our knees are over towards the right, left arm lifts and extends, adds length down that side wall. Today's practice is going to help you find that self-confidence. You're going to try a couple poses that might make you moving the knees to the other side. Go ahead might make you have to dig a little deeper, have to find that confidence hiding down inside of us, find that passion, that heart, the prana, that heavy 
excited energy within us. Turn on a little heat. All right, once you've got both those sides stretched out, just start to bring those knees back to center. We're gonna invite the right knee in towards the chest, hands gripping perhaps on the shin or maybe on the back of the thigh. You might even extend long through the other leg, pointing and flexing the toes, giving this a little bit of movement through the ankles, the back of the head, might even sway a little bit right and left. And then you can stay here with one long leg as you extend up through your right foot, or if that feels too big, just bring that bent knee in a little closer. Everybody looks good. Just take your time here. All right, bending that knee, we'll bring it down into the chest, hugging it nice and close, and then switch out, opposite side. So this time, left knee moves into the body. It might feel nice to send this right leg long down the back. Point and flex through the toes on both sides, both ankles getting a little bit of movement, a little love. Continuing that fluid breath, hands will switch perhaps to the back of the thigh. Pushing through that heel, you can make yourself look like a set of scissors, or you can move this foot up the mat to serve as a kickstand again. Just a little bit of opening love here to the hamstrings, the backs of the legs. Getting a little tension. Perfect. Go ahead and bring that knee down into the body. We'll bring both our hands to the tops of the kneecaps, invite both knees in close to the chest, and just start a little bit of rolling motion with those knees, hugging them tight, and kind of inviting them away. And then maybe you go the other way, hug them tight, and then invite them, push them away. All right, good work. All right, when you feel ready, let's extend both of those feet, both legs up to the ceiling, and then my arms are gonna go high above my head. I look like a letter L. So I've got heels up tall, and hands reaching up over the head. If that feels good to you, go ahead and hang out there for a moment. Get a little bit of pointing and flexing again in those feet, maybe bending the knees and stamping them up on the ceiling might feel nice. Perfect. All right, for your next exhale breath, go ahead and bend the knees, bring the hands down so that they kind of brace either sides of your hips. And then inhale, find that letter L again. So just move through this a couple more times, exhaling and inhaling, looking for length. Now, of course, if you want to change this up a little bit, you certainly can bring your head up off the floor when you exhale, chin lifts towards ceiling. If your inhale breath, the head comes back down. We've got lots of concentration on that core strength. Lots of concentration on breath. Link through fingertips, link through the heels, just easing in and out. You want to feel strong. You want to feel power, building that confidence in your own shapes here. Last one. Next time you're in letter L, just soften. Knees might bend, arms might take themselves to more of a cactus shape. You might kind of rock around a little bit here on your low back, if that feels good. Hands might even come back up to the fronts of the knees and you can kind of stir those knees around again. All right. And then when you feel ready, we're going to start to move up towards table. Just take your time. It might feel nice to kind of rock a little bit forward and back there, and then just ease your way into table. Do a quick check or quick just to make sure there's nobody else. Nope, we're good. Sometimes my screen lights up funny colors, so I want to make sure I was good. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. 
really doesn't matter what direction you face when I'm going to turn this way just because I feel easier for me to look at you. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. You got it. All right, couple cat cows. Just take your time. Everything in the body is just getting some warm. Now this Zoom class today is full of people who want to move and breathe alongside of you, which is so wonderful to feel. So see if you can feel that energy, even though it's through the computer, or through your phone, or through your tablet, you can feel the fact that we're all moving together as one. Our inhale breath drops those bellies down. Your exhale breath gives length as you lift the spine. Let's take a few more. Feel that connection with the mat underneath your hands. Underneath your knees. Last one. This next time you get to your angry cat spine, let's take your first child's pose. Toenails drop down into the mat. Sit the hips back towards heels. This is always a place where you can invite in a prop or two. If it feels better, put the blanket across the backs of your legs. Feel free. If you want to put a block back here too, sometimes those of us who kind of struggle to get those hips back on heels, if you put a few props there, it can help be a little more comfortable. Knees can be straight down the mat, or you can add some width between those knees. You can widen the knees and really let the chest fall down through the middle. Arms might stretch really long. You might even tent the fingers. That's where we kind of bring them up, like they look like cupcakes hiding underneath your hands. And put that forehead down into the mat. Let it go. Give yourself another round of breath here. And then we'll start to bring ourselves back up, looking for that tabletop. Right hand is going to move itself right underneath your face. Left hand is going to inhale to add length, lift up through the fingertips. Exhale, bring this down to the floor. Now you're going to do that two more times. So lift and open. Exhale and close. One more time, lift and open. Exhale and close, switching sides. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to close. Inhale to lengthen. And close. You've got your last one. Follow your own pace of breath here. And close. Beautiful. Start to stretch the right foot nice and long behind you. Left hand extends long, balancing dog or balancing table, rather. Sometimes called bird dog. When I was in college, my parents had a German short-haired pointer, and it actually did this. It was a bird dog. It would point when it would see things in the yard. All right, bringing that hand down to earth, keep the leg lifted, bend this knee, flex the foot as if you're holding a little serving tray right there, and just give this a couple pulses. We're focusing on the place where our glute and our thigh meet, really building that muscle strength right there. Give it one more round. Perfect. Extend that leg long behind you. Toes come down and touch the mat. Curl those toes under. Lift the knee up off the ground. Little half down dog. Long spine. Perfect. Drop that knee back to ground. Lift the right foot up. Let it step all the way over to the left edge of your mat. Look over your left shoulder. Big C curve of the spine. Excellent job. Bring that foot back to the middle of the mat. Knee rejoins the ground. This time, left leg extends. Right arm, bird dog, or balancing table. And you can play with what this back foot does. Sometimes I like it flex. Sometimes it's kind of a half flex. Sometimes it's a point. Hand comes down to ground, knee bends, 
You got that serving tray. Again, look how flexed your foot is. Take a quick peek over, see what's going on back there. And then just give it a little bit of lift. Now, if you notice, I'm not doing a big hike where it's putting pain in my low back. It's just a little pulse. Add some length out of that leg, toes come down, toes curl under, lift hips, half down dog, push back into that heel. Really allow the back side of that leg to open. Knees drop down to mat, left foot steps now to the right edge of your mat. Look over that right shoulder, big C curve, kind of a banana shape again of the spine. Awesome. All right, take your time. Feet come back to mat. Curl toes under. First downward facing dog of this morning's practice. Walk out that dog. You've got time to do so. So bend the knees. Really pay attention to your mat. See how your hands feel. See how your feet feel. Kick some stuff out of the way here. You can see me a little better. All right, when that down dog starts to feel good, we're going to make some slow energy movement of feet up towards our hands. So just some small steps. If at any point the hands need to come up off the ground and start to walk towards your feet, that's fine too. Find a forward fold, ragdoll it, right hand to left elbow, left hand to right elbow, and just sway a little. Work. All right, hands drop down. Let them find the earth or your ankles or your shins. And then bring it up halfway. Nice long spine. Your hands might even come up nice and high on the thighs. Exhale, fold down towards those toes. Two more just like that. Inhale, breath, long extension of the spine. Exhale, breath, fold. One more. Plant the feet into the earth. Big inhale. Hands reach up. Look up for the sky. Exhale down to heart. Half sun salutation. So when you feel ready, you'll feel length up through your fingers, reaching for the sky. Exhale, breath will hinge and fold you down towards the earth. Halfway lifting, long spine. Exhale, fold. Big inhale. Hands reach up. Look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, hands to heart. Keep going. Fluid breath. Another one. Up and down. Halfway up. Long spine. Exhale, fold. Great work. Big inhale. Hands reach up. Look up. This time as you exhale, look for cactus arms. Let them open out to the sides. Beautiful. Hands reach back up nice and tall. Exhale, hinge and fold down to the earth. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Right foot only. Steps to the back of the mat. Low lunge. Just hold here for a breath. Let the hands find the earth on either sides of this front foot. Front foot's going to step to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog. Breathing there. Shifting from that down dog to either a traditional plank, wrist and shoulders in a line, or knees drop to the mat. Exhale, lower down, one vinyasa here, elbows close to the body. Inhale, cobra, one lift. Exhale, toes curl under, knees find ground or plank, hips lift up, downward facing dog. All right, when you're ready, small steps with the feet. Let them walk forward. Half lift. Back down, full exhale. Big inhale, hands reach up, look up. Find that cactus again. Exhale, breath. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Using that breath, lower yourself down to the earth. Inhale, halfway up, long spine. 
Exhale, hands find the ground. This time, left foot steps back. Low lunge. Get comfortable in this shape. Now, when we have the back knee up off the ground, we're really curious about this front knee. We want to keep it protected. So, in a nice, good line with that ankle. When you feel ready, this front foot is now going to step to the back, just as you did before. Put it in that downward facing dog shape. Hips are lifted nice and high, long spine. Shifting to plank, another vinyasa here. Strong length. Lowering down through either a cobra pose with the knees or maybe a full chaturanga dandasana to upward facing dog. Then into that downward facing dog. Good work. Once you get to your down dog, give yourself a breath or two here. I'm lifting up onto my toes and then lowering back down if that feels good. Put some movement in the back side of the body. All right, good work. Small steps with the feet. Let them walk forward towards your hands. Hang in that same forward fold we played in before. This time, Ragdoll it again. Right hand to left elbow. Left hand to right elbow. Let the head hang heavy through the center of your hands. Don't forget the power of that breath. Make sure you're breathing. Hands drop down towards the ground. Big inhale, halfway up. Pause with that long spine. Exhale, fold. Plant the feet, big inhale, hands reach high to the sky. Exhale, cactus pose. Cactus arms, reach those hands back up. And then just let them get soft into your heart. Good work, friends. All right, when you're ready, we're going to float and flow again. Inhale, hands will lift. Changing it up just slightly this time, exhale, fold. Inhale, bring it up half leg. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back to the back of the mat, just like we did before. Hold this low lunge. Now, a block may be helpful to come into the inside of this front foot, but it's not required. We can put the hand down on the earth. When you're ready, right foot is back. Left hand is going to open, and then exhale, close. Go ahead and drop this back knee for the next one. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. You can stay here or lift that knee for the last round. And close. Front foot steps back to meet this back foot. Downward facing dog. Staying here for three breaths. Or you have the option for that vinyasa again. Plank, lowering down. Inhale, up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Knowing you can skip that too. We don't have to do all those vinyasas, all those reverse push ups if we don't need them. All right, this time we're going to see if we can step this right foot all the way up to the front of the mat. So that we've got our left foot down. Get yourself set in that low lunge again. Your left hand this time is going to come to the inside of this foot. A block might be helpful, but not required. Right hand lifts. And lowers. Back knee drops. Next time, lift. And lower. You can lift that knee up off the ground, or you can keep it there. And then we're back down. Both hands on either side of this front foot. Step the front foot to the back of your mat. You're back and head down dog. Stay here. Three breaths. Or optional vinyasa. We can always be here on our knees as well. Child pose is welcome anytime you need it. Creating space, creating confidence in the body. So if you're feeling weak, you're feeling 
Like this might be moving a little faster than you planned on this morning. Where can you feel more confident? Find your pose. It's going to allow you to feel that heat, feel the strength in your body. But also the ease. You're walking that line between active movement and ease. When we feel ready, ladies and gentlemen, let's walk our feet up here to our hands. Take your time in this fold. Let the head hang heavy, shaking chest. No. And then half lift, strong spine. Exhale, fold. Plant the feet, big inhale, hands reach up, look up. Cactus arms. And then just bring it into your heart. Resting here with number 11 feet. So your feet are straight up your mat. Your hands are at your heart. Your shoulders drop down from your ears. Gaze straight forward while your eyes are closed. Feel the strength of the legs. The support of your feet rooted into the ground. Confident stance here. Let's just take another breath. Good work. Arms should be feeling nice and warm. When you're ready, inhale, breath stretches these arms up nice and high above the head. Exhale, breath takes us into that forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back. Put that right foot in the ground. Spin the heel. Place it down. Warrior one. The arms come up strong. Think again. Take that big lunging shape. As you exhale, let your hands fall down to the sides of your body and then reach back behind. Maybe they clasp. Maybe they just dangle and point. Maybe they reach for a little back. You make the option that's going to fit you the best today. One more nice breath here. As you feel ready, you're going to hinge at your hip crease. Chaps is going to start to fall to the inside of this front knee. Arms might come up over the head or be a little more relaxed. Use the strength of your legs. Inhale, breath. Bring that chest back up. Hands separate. Reach back up with those arms. Good work, friends. All right, hands on either sides of the heart. Big push, three times, exhale. Inhale back in. Two more. Sending that strength out through the hands. Reach and push. Beautiful, hands come back in. You're gonna allow your hands to Rest down by your hips. We're gonna make a big turn up onto these back toes. So see how strong I look in that back leg? See if you can extend a little bit more. Arms reach up. Excellent. You're gonna put a lot of weight up towards this front foot in a moment, and we're gonna step into a big shape. You can take warrior three with hands back by your hips. You can take warrior three with your arms extending forward. Put weight forward into this foot. There's no shame in a little hop, hop, hop here, though, to get yourself ready. And then weight shifts forward. Turn it into a balanced pose. Want to know the coolest part about this pose? You can't see I'm touching the wall. <laughs> so I look like I am so balanced. The magic of fake imagery here. Staying in that pose, one more breath, long extended, you got it. Swing this back foot that's been lifted all the way forward next to your standing foot, and then just take a big forward fold. Inhale, reach, exhale, fold. Hang loose there, let your head dangle. Shake it yes, shake it no. Bend your knees, feel really heavy and loose, down towards the ground. And then find that same half lift. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Your legs feel warm. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, hands to heart. Strong, steady feet into the ground. And then we'll go again. Hands reach up. Half 
Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Left foot steps back. Spin that left heel. Warrior one, just like you did before. Strong, rooted feet. Big, important muscles. Really rooting down into the ground. Hands reaching up, shoulders relaxing down your spine. Beautiful work. Hands are going to sweep down by your hips, and then just like we did before, we have that option to either lace behind the back and get a nice big heart opener. Maybe it looks something more like this, a little more relaxed, or even just hands back by your hips. I see all of you taking different variations. It's fantastic. Listen to your own body. A warrior one by itself can sometimes be enough. There's a lot going on in all these big muscles, so don't feel forced to take a shape you're not ready for. If you want to hinge into the front of this pose, just as you did before, think about that hip crease. Hands might come up and over the back, or maybe they're more relaxed. So proud of the strength that you're showing on the mat today. Inhale, breath brings chest back up, hands reach tall, soak them down towards the side body. With that breath, inhale, extend. So just take your time. Whatever pattern feels good, maybe exhaling away, inhaling in, or maybe you switch it up and you do it opposite of what you did last time. Find what feels good to you. Let's just do one more for good measure because I kind of talked you through it. And then bring this back. And start to relax. We start to think about that back foot. It's going to twist and turn up. We start to look like a big crescent shape, really getting as much length as possible out of that back leg, extending it long behind you. Hands for your warrior three, again, can point back by your hips, can be out in front, or maybe some airplane version. Weight shifts forward towards your front foot. Feel that confident stance as you reach into whatever version you like this practice, today's practice, to get length. And if you're at home and you want to put your hands on the couch or the wall or get off your mat and use some other kind of prop in your room, feel free. Beautiful. Watching that back hip, I can see myself on the screen kind of rotating this foot open. See if you can keep yours so that your toenails are facing down towards the earth. Sweep that back leg up to meet your standing foot and then fold again. Let that fold be heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Let your chest fall down. Let your head be heavy. It might even feel nice to really get your hands down on the earth. And I've even seen sometimes where it feels good to wrap these hands around the backs of our legs. Bigger shape there for the back side. Just kind of listen to your body. See what feels good in your own skin. Be confident enough to take the yoga where you need it today. Get a good shake of the head, yes and no. All right, and then you're going to take this word fold, turn it into a half lift, just like you did before. Exhale it back down. And then inhale it all the way back up to standing. Bring the hands down and place them in your heart. Close the eyes. Number 11 is with the feet, nice, tall, lengthy spine. Now, where you're seeing on the mat is your best view of me. Stay right there. We're going to use the inhale breath next to bend the knees, sink into chair, and elevate our arms up overhead. Then the exhale breath is going to bring us to standing. If it feels better to exhale down and inhale up, that might be where your pattern of breath is. You decide. Now, like exhaling down and inhaling up. That might feel better. You can just take a couple more. So you've got that pretend chair hanging out behind you. Or 
you feeling powerful this morning? Are you feeling like you're kind of dragging? It's okay. Either emotion is fine or somewhere in between. We're not always as powerful as we want to be every time we step on the mat, and that's okay. Find the strength, even if this is a smaller sit. Because we're not going as deep as I'm showing on the screen. Or maybe you're feeling really powerful and you're really sinking down into the squat. Last one. Hands come to heart. If you're at the top of your mat, turn yourself sideways so that you can step long and wide on your mat. Give a little opportunity for shoulders here. Arms are going to stretch wide, make a five-pointed star. A little bit of side body here. So I really want you to take a quick peek down at your right toes. Make sure that your knee and your toes are going in the same direction. So if your toes are turned slightly out, I want that knee to match. You're going to keep this left hand extended. As you bend your right knee, hand will kind of fall down to that right side and your left hand's gonna reach up and over. So if your knee is forward, that's okay. It can look like this. So it can either feel kind of like a side angle, or it can feel more like a lunge. Or a, I don't know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't know, a half squat. See, this is where it would be helpful for you to be in front of me. So when my brain kind of fails me, you guys can tell me what the poses are called. <laughs> All right, take your time. If you haven't turned your toes outward, this next round I want you to experiment with that. So turn your toes all the way to the side, bend that knee and reach the hand over the top. Beautiful, let's bend those toes all the way to the side, bend the knee and reach over. If that's what you had been doing the whole time, you try with your knees forward, just so that you can experience how it feels a little bit different. I love that I can see you, those of you Zooming with us today, I can see that your rhythm is a little bit different than mine, and that's okay. Your rhythm is different than each other. All right, last one on both sides. Make sure you're even, so if you started on the right, make sure you finish that way. And then just give yourself a couple big shoulder rolls. We're going to take a big forward fold. Now, if you have a block handy, it might be nice to kind of reach for it or kick it, bring it to the middle of your mat. If you don't have a block, it's okay. Hands are going to reach up nice and tall, and then you're going to fold into that big wide leg fold. Now, your legs can be really far apart, or you can bring them in a little closer, depending on your level of confidence today. You can have your hands on a block. I don't know if you can see mine, but hands can be on a block. Head can be heavy, or you can let your back be a little more supported. Maybe your gaze is out a little bit in front of you and you've got a nice long spine. Now I'm going to give you two options for that twist. Remember I said today's class is going to have some twists in it. We've already done several down on our knees. We're going to have another in our chair here in just a moment, but let's add this twist to this wide fold. So right hand stays positioned either on the floor or on the block, let the left hand open. Exhale, close that door. Watch these knees, make sure they don't feel any kind of tweaking. The inner thigh is what's really absorbing that twist. Bring it down. Option to stay right there at center, or you can take this right hand, move it towards your left foot, and make the twist a little bigger. Close the door. Same thing, block in hand or hand just walking over to the other edge, make the twist a little bigger. We're going to do a third twist. Hands can be back at center where we started, or you can go one step further, even on the outer edge of that foot, and add the twist. If that's too big, don't go so far. You don't have to make it that big. Go the other direction, take your time. Inhaling when you open your twist. Exhaling when you close it. Hands walk well back to center. Turn this into that big forward fold again. Maybe ragdoll arm. 
So if you've been straining today to look at me, and every time I tell you something different, you're kind of kinking your neck to find me, I want you to take a big shake of your head. Let your neck really release that. It can put a lot of unnecessary stress on our bodies trying to look, have the confidence to just try to listen. All right, friends, slow movement with the feet. Start bringing them in a little bit closer underneath of you. Maybe a heel toe motion. And then either half lift to standing, or it might feel nice to do a little slow motion roll up, where you roll up one vertebra at a time using that inhale breath. Stacking right on top of the other. Until the head comes up, and then release the hands down, close the eyes, get a nice, good, full round of breath here. Good. Hands come in and find your heart. Option here, we're going to take that chair I described earlier, adding those twists. You can keep a little bit of space between your feet, or you can walk these feet together until your knees touch and you're nice and close. Inhale, breath here at a tall spine. Exhale, breath, hands go to the right edge of that right knee. Inhale, bring this back up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Use this breath. It can go a little slower than I'm showing, or a little faster. All right, we're gonna do one more fluid like this. Now, the next time those hands are back at your heart, I want you to pause there. Get a good, full inhale breath. Exhale breath, this time right elbow is gonna look for that right, or left elbow, right knee. I'm sorry, right elbow. No, <laughs> left elbow, right knee. Hands can open. You can continue to breathe here, or hands can stay tight together. Inhale, bring it back up nice and tall, hands to chest. Let the feet come apart, let the arms droop down, maybe some shoulder rolls, maybe some fluid knees and hips. Start walking that back together, hands to heart. Now, just as before, right elbow, a left knee. I think I said it right that time. Right elbow, left knee. That's the goal. So what your back looks like is important as well. We want to bring this down. We want to try our best not to have this big rolled over back. So see if you can sink a little bit more, even if that elbow doesn't come all the way to the outside edge. Just see if we can keep that back nice and long. Arms might float open. Stay close. Watch these knees. Make sure they're still floating forward to match your toes. Lots of alignment cues we can really look out for, but I think you guys look good. Inhale, hands back to the chest. Stand up strong when you feel ready. And then let this turn loose again. All right, I'm going to turn this into one last sun salutation. So step this up to the front of your mat when you feel ready. A big inhale adds length. A slow motion fold. Make this really slow. Really peel away at those hamstrings. When the hands hit the floor, let them walk around. Maybe they look for the backs of your calves. You might lift your tail just a little bit up towards the ceiling. And then soften that. Hands get loose, tail drops, hands look for the floor, step these feet back. Maybe plank on your knees. Maybe you don't have a lot in your tank, that's okay. If you want a full plank, you certainly can have it. Exhale just to lower. Take your time. One cobra or one up dog. Exhale down. And then we're gonna lift to either downward facing dog. 
or maybe just put yourself in child pose. If you're in down dog, stay there for another breath and then just drop these knees down to the ground. Meet us in child when you're ready. Our child's pose today would be better served if we took our time to open the knees, really let your chest fall down through the middle. Surrender to the earth. Let the belly feel heavy as it falls down onto your mat. Let your forehead have a moment to kind of sweep a little bit side to side, relaxing tension in your shoulders. Really let that child's pose let go. We're definitely to the part of today's practice where things are going to feel a little calmer, a little more at ease. Hands start to walk off towards the left side of your mat. Start to reach to that left side so your hands are walking over that direction. You're sitting into opposite hip. Side body gets a little more of that love. you've had music playing in the room, you'll want to either turn the volume down or get it into a pace of beat that feels softer. Walk the hands back to the middle. Let them walk this time all the way over to the other side of the mat. Hands take their time. Easy, slow, back to center of the mat. And then you're just going to come up just enough from your child's pose that you can take this right hand and slide it, palm facing upward, underneath this left arm. Extend your left arm out and sit down to stretch that shoulder. Now mine is fully extended out from underneath. If that doesn't sit well, it can be bent. Or you don't have to even be in this shape. You can go a little softer. I can be up off the ground. Use your inhale breath to start to bring that right arm out from underneath. Chest comes up just enough to switch out your hands. Left hand this time, palm facing up. Just kind of slides underneath this armpit, reaching off to the left side of your mat. And the stretch is happening right here along the outer edge of my left shoulder as I reach over to the other side. We harbor so much stress and tension in our upper back, in our shoulders, and our hips. So this kind of hits both, all three. Good work. Ease that arm back to mat. And then we're going to walk ourselves up towards high knees just for a breath. So use your inhale to reach these hands up nice and tall. And then exhale, bring them to the heart. Maybe you need one more. And then just soften everything. Start to move towards your seat. Legs come out from underneath of you. Feet are going to extend up the front of your mat. Take a quick peek over your shoulder. See what's behind you if you want a blanket or a block, pillow, bolster, anything that's going to help you feel a little bit more comfortable. If you have two blocks today, maybe those blocks are going to go underneath the backs of your knees. That might feel really nice to keep those handy. Just start to head back to your back. And then this is where if you're an experienced practitioner, you've been doing yoga for a while, or you've been following along with me for a little while, Feel free to move into something that feels good to you. You don't have to listen for these final cues. You just want whatever's going to help you seal off this practice. My knees are going to come to my chest. I'm going to take that same stirring motion with my knees. I'm going to add a little movement in my ankles. They're cracking, popping a little bit. They still need a little bit of my toes. Maybe a happy baby would be nice, grabbing on the outer edges of those feet, hugging knees down to the sides of the body, or maybe a crisscross of the ankles. 
Your asana is complete. The physical practice, that heat that was built in the body, is going to come to rest. Maybe soles of the feet together, Chittabhadha Kanasana, knees out to the side, hands resting on belly or heart might feel good. Or maybe you're ready to just go ahead and find whatever version of Savasana is going to settle with you today. Since you're at home, you always have options. You don't have to look like traditional Savasana, which is legs fully extended down the mat, toes kind of rolling out toward the outer edges. You can have bent knees. You can let these knees fall in and touch one another. Again, hands resting at the heart. You could take Baddha Konasana, like we were doing earlier. Or if you're lucky enough to have a wall nearby, you know you could always shift and put your legs at the wall. Wherever you are in this space, Start to feel that inner light really shine. You made it. Today's practice was a powerful one. It required a lot of your physical body. It required a lot of your mind to listen to cues, to follow along. So now it's okay to rest. It's okay for you to turn off all of those intense skills that were turned on to follow today's practice. It's all right for you to find some quiet. So whatever pose that looks like for you is okay with me. Tapping into that big, full inhale. And that slow, easy exhale. Let your body feel heavy into the earth. Inhaling a sense of peace. Exhaling to release. Slowly starting to allow a little bit of movement back into the body. Let this movement be as slow and minimal as you would like. Maybe just letting the nose draw an invisible line across the ceiling. Or the hands having a little bit of movement to open and close. You might find yourself bringing knees into chest. Rocking a little bit from side to side, maybe even bringing your right arm up to serve as a pillow as you take a sideline savasana resting on that right hand side for just a few more breaths. Pressing into the ground, bring it back to your seat, easy and slowly when you feel ready. Today's opening intention was about confidence. It was about feeling empowered and finding that inner strength even in times when we don't feel we have the confidence it takes. Reflecting on a moment where you felt confident, 
Maybe it was a particular pose in this practice today. See if you can reflect on a time where you felt the muscles of your body cooperating, the strength within you necessary and ready. Hold on to that feeling and use that visualization to attack any part of your life that just needs a little boost of confidence. So you got this. I greatly appreciate you taking this time to practice with me, not only for your physical body, which is often why we come to flow classes. We want to feel physical, but we've got that much needed time to rest our mind as well. Thank you again for practicing with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.